Hello, I'm Lisa Marie for OK Nigeria TV and tonight with the IROC UK's Tribes of Africa. By Brent Bruce, how are you this evening? Fine, thank you. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you enjoying the IROC event? Well, I just got here. I think it's going to be a great event. Viola is a good friend for many years, and I'm very excited to be here uh, supporting the cause, mentoring young Africans, and uh, having a terrific fashion show here today. So, yeah. So, what are your thoughts on African artists that are making it big, like Debange and Wizkid and Ice Prince, who are coming over to the UK and the US? Well, these are, first of all, Debange and Ice Prince are good friends of mine, and, and I'm happy for them, and I'm happy for Africa. First of all, first of all, you know, if you listen, if you look at, if you listen to music over the last hundred years, they had a British sound, they had American sound, they had a Motown sound, they had the Solar sound, they had uh, Elvis Presley, rock and roll. Everybody goes through a phase. Everybody goes through a phase. Right now is Africa time. And Africa time means you're gonna have two phase, the Banj and, and Ice Prince and, and all of those acts. They're gonna dominate the world. And it's just our time. I'm joined by K Flawless Fashion. How are you today? I'm okay, thank you. So what do you do in K Flawless Fashion? Well I'm the founder and director of the agency. My name is Karin, so to make it easier for everybody, the agency is called K Flawless Fashion. So we're at the iRock event tonight. Yes. Who are you most looking forward to seeing? Uh, well, I represent Tina Lebonzi. Okay. She'll be having, she's not there tonight, she's abroad, but uh, I can't wait to see her stuff on the catwalk. I'm being biased. Shishia London, Anita Kwanzaa, people that you don't get to see often. Your designs are on show today at the iRock. What inspired them? Well, um, quite a mixture of things, from travels, from art, from places I've been, from things I've seen, from inspiration, which I think is, I always say, not think, I know for sure, it's God-given. So quite a lot of things, you know. I'm joined by Anita Kwanza. How are you this evening? I'm fine, thank you. Just seen your show, I was absolutely blown away. You. Your pieces are so beautiful. What inspires you? Oh gosh, everything and everything, uh, anything and everything, um, especially culture. I'm um, coming from a mixed African um, background, dad, Ghanaian, mom, Nigerian. So a lot of my stuff is very much African inspired and sometimes I can be inspired by art, music or exhibition that I've seen but it gears towards more of my cultural background. So, Where do you get the materials from for a lot of your designs? Um, a lot of my pieces actually um, is a combination of um, recycled pieces mixed with vintage pieces. Um, so a lot of my pieces are like sourced from um, charity shops, vintage stores, um, mixing pieces with heritage and history and combine that with some African um, materials as well. Um, that has history to it or even unexpected materials such as safety pins as well which people think okay the safety pin but to actually make an, a whole gamut out of safety pin is people wouldn't think about that so I tend to surprise people with the kind of materials I use. I'm joined by Viola, the founder of iRock event. I thoroughly enjoyed this evening. How did you enjoy it? Um, I was half nervous, <laughs> half the night, you know, but I was proudly um, looking at the mentees as they, you know, handled the show. And I think I felt like a mother with her children, so I was gushing with pride. <laughs> so the show tonight was not just about the designers and their clothing, but it was also about changing people's lives and empowering women. Can you tell us a bit more about what iRock does? Yes, iRock really is designed to empower. Um, we empower young people and uh, one of the programs that we look after is Sister to Sister, which is what the program today is, where it's specific to young girls. iRock goes into schools, we go into university, and we take empowerment programs, and we try and mentor young people through a long-term, sustainable term about, it's not just about going into education, when you're completing your education, these are the challenges that are going to face you. 
especially as ethnic minorities. So we try and engage them at an early year so that when they finish school, which is what we are finding now, is that young black people have finished their degree, they've finished their college, then they're stuck. And then they start getting involved with crime. So we want to catch them much earlier and take people like yourself, myself, who are working, who are doing something, and go out and engage and just give these young people a hope, a dream, you know, and that little push to say if you can dream it and if you dare it and just do it, the world is your oyster.